Welcome to episode number 56 of the BEBC BS podcast. Woo, 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 woo. 56, fellas. We start right there today. That's 50, right. 56. Yeah. That's, a, that's a memorable number that we will never forget. Who could that Before no we get to that, though, let's go current. Let's go current. Yeah. Well, does anybody know current? I'm. I'm in the he's in process. The look mode. Look in the process. You're in the danger right zone there. there, aren't you? Oh, he played last night. Danger, danger. Yeah, a lot Can of kids played. Yeah, actually, he got called out last night too, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How Oops. do you pronounce that? Is that Kanata? I thought it was Kanata Carter. Kanata, 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 Kanata Carter. Kanata, Kanata. Five eleven, two hundred thirty-nine pound defensive lineman, senior. Yeah. Welcome to the big time, brother. You played well last night in your time in the in the game but if we think about number 56 for the allen eagles i think everybody oh oh, hang on hang on hang on oh hang on hang on (laughs) here it comes hang it on here it comes there can only be one very good it's true that's cool we got cue cards like that yeah pull those out 56 tejan tejan Karoma. the dude with the biggest arms of any high school player i've ever seen freaking beast in the middle Goes to BYU as a freshman. He is the strongest member of the team. It's crazy. There's a yeah, video. There's video, a video David's circulating a out video there. Here. Oh man, yeah. Put that up to the camera. All right. Let's that is so this. impressive. This, this, oh, this my is God. what you do. Keep going. There you go. Right there. That's a. That's 260 pounds total, right there, fellas. 130 in each hand, and he's just doing it like nothing. All right, all I, you listeners and all you people watching, if you can do that. We want to see the video. The <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll come right in here and, and bring your weights and we'll see. <laughs> we'll give you a free donut. I can do 130 in each end. Well, you take the zero off because... Oh, you can do 13. <laughs> zero is nothing, so I can... Yeah, I can do that. Well... <sighs> maybe. Mr. Carone, in his time here at Allen, graduated in, in 2014. He kept Collar alive back there. Three-star oh recruit, number 25 rated center in the nation by ESPN. He won the 5A crown in 2012 with a 15-1 record. Came back the next year in 2013. I guess he's a 2013 graduate. I'm sorry. 16-0 and oh, yeah, yeah. 5A. 5A. Boy. That yeah. was him back. Yeah. 5A first team All-State by the Texas Sports Writers Association. As a senior, was a 5A first team All-State and a DFW Class 5A All-Area first team by the Associated Press. As a junior, was selected as the first team All-State center. Totaled 110 pancake blocks over his junior and senior hey, season. We'll never forget the pancake blocks in 13. <laughs> I mean, everybody. He was also on the track team. He threw shot put. He was born in Dallas. His parents are from Sierra Leone. And he was recruited by a bunch of people. Ended up going to BYU. Yeah. When he gets to BYU. Now, Tejon wasn't the tallest individual. No. Six foot. But he was uh, stout, a good day. 290. He uh, started in all 51 games played as a four-year starter. Consistently graded as BYU's top offensive lineman. Named to the Pro Football Focus All-American second team in 2017. A three-time Remington Trophy watch list honoree, which is for the best lineman. A freshman All-American in 2014. Three-time Phil Steele All-Independent team. 2016, he was graded by Pro Football Focus as one of the top four centers in college football and received the Ironman Award, Offensive Player of the Year Award, and Captain's Award at the Annual Team Banquet 2018. Now, you think about that, a center being the Offensive Player of the Year Award. That doesn't happen often. It's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. And he was never officially the the cause or start of any ruckuses on or off the field. <laughs> He uh, ended them. He uh, never instigated them. <laughs> he always finished them. Yep. Yeah. I don't know about that, man. Oh <laughs> Yeah, I know. Okay, and then... Here we go. Your opinion. Here we go. New segment? The nastiest lineman that we ever had. Oh, good Lord, yes. In a good way. Yeah. Oh. Without a doubt. He, well, he was the enforcer. Yeah. Col- he, he was He was Cole Carter's wingman. He would <laughs> Cole Carter would get himself into trouble with the yeah. <laughs> with the skyline uh, you know big boys and Tayshawn was there so, oh, run, no 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 yeah he had run over yeah. The- yeah so he was signed by the Chiefs as an undrafted free agent in May of eighteen and got injured he, uh, got injured and was waived in eighteen he placed an injury reserve by the Chiefs and he was waived on twenty nineteen in April so 
Tejon's looking for a home. So one of you silly teams that needs a center that can really play and has a nasty streak, as you say. Yeah. Tejon's out there. But that's our player of the week that we were going to highlight. And, and, and one of the nicest guys. He is. Most respectful guys yeah, you would ever meet. Gentle, gentle giant off the yeah. field. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. But uh, what a great player for the Eagles. And he, he anchored that line that had a lot of talent that just kept Kyler upright so he could do what and, he did. And if you, need to, if you need to ask somebody about how strong and fast his uh, – his hikes were just just talk to talk to some of the people that played quarterback kept, in the in the big package. He kept, They'll tell you about. He it. kept that bottle of scotch and that cigar in his back pocket. Just there for the collar. Collar. <laughs> it was a real in between right blocks. Right. Oh goodness! Well, yeah, those are good memories. The regular season's <laughs> over, folks. It is. Finally. Thank heavens. And, and for, yeah, well, that's what some programs are saying. Hey, <laughs> yeah. let's yeah, go that's to what basketball. Plano's saying that's what? Yep. <laughs> This is a glorious day, buddy. I was waiting for David to get on his high horse here. That's now. right. Why not, is it a glorious day, David? No Plano schools in the playoffs. Not a one. Wah, wah. It is great. Right. If it, something doesn't happen now after this, I mean, then come it on. ain't ever going to happen. They're going to still be poor and Gerald, terrible the rest of their lives. Gerald? Come on, Gerald. Unbelievable. Especially the way... What a <sighs> program school to Plano kind of fell apart so these downhill. last two games. I mean, to be shut out by Boyd, and then they got no. waxed last night by Prosper. It was just ugly. And that game was over by halftime, so people in McKinney, who were at the Boyd-McKinney game, knew that that game was for the last playoff spot. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was 7-7 at halftime, uh, a game in which McKinney ends up kicking a field goal, and I haven't looked at the box score well, and, and to close quarter. out the game, they, they intercepted uh, a pass, and, and Boyd is done, right? Game, set, match. Yeah, 10-7. to seven. Oh, my God. I used the tennis reference. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> should yeah. like that, That's even like, though uh, you told me to quit mixing my sports. Your metaphors. Yeah. But it's over with. So, for the second year in a row, McKinney wins the last game of the year. Way to go. Marcus Shavers. Marcus. Coach A little bit of advice. The playoffs are great, but you can clinch a little bit earlier, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put us on the edge like that. Yeah. The precipice. Come on, man. Get it over in week seven or eight, you know. Don't don't wait till the last minute. It creates heartburn and heartache and all sorts of things. Let... But then again, I'll say this because it's been a long time since Allen had that. It made yeah. the game matter. You know, and that's the first thing we said yesterday. We started tailgate. It was like this game doesn't matter one, right? One way or the other, other than fr from a playoff or non-playoff or positioning standpoint, nothing. Yeah, yeah. man, it matters for the seniors because all the seniors get to play. Uh, yeah, it, in this game, it matters in that perspective. From but on paper, it's like, man, right. yeah, what what good does it do? And. Allen kind of played like it did. <laughs> if I it, say it, so it myself, kind of felt like that. Uh, yeah, I know the coaches are not settling for that, and they would never instill that kind of attitude. But it just it was tough. I had three people on the way out of the stadium last night. This is this is God's honest truth. Looked at me and said, "Can't wait to hear what you have to say positive about this one." <laughs> I was just like pressure. Yeah, and, but it, it, we'll get there because yeah. there were some there yes, were we some will. bright lights. Oh, there were some very bright lights. And you also had the thing you didn't want to have happen, and that happened. And, and so there's there's plenty to talk about. There were some tweaks. but Allen beats Plano West, which was expected, 34-10, to 10, um, in a game that shouldn't have been that close. Right. Um, Should have at least doubled. And <clears throat> doubled the points. We gave them a little bit more excitement happen. before they ended, you know, started their basketball season. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, you know, I thought about that, and, you know, as much as I've – you know, hate that running the clock thing. We all do it in certain situations. I mean, Allen's done it too. I mean, just to keep from and when a close game, like yeah. Travis. You know, yeah. the state playoffs. You know, yeah, run the clock down. Run the clock down. But they haven't know? done it from the beginning of the game. No, I know. Right. But yeah. you know, think about it. Plano West had maybe forty players on the sideline. You know, no, they, they, they don't forty nine. I counted. They had a forty nine. Forty nine. Forty nine. <laughs> See how okay. bored we were? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, I, and I understand from that point, you know, the coach doesn't want to get them all worn out. Yep. You know, having to play us. Because, I mean, we have had those games where that was at 2013, 
that was 77 to 21 or something like that. Yeah, so so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I understand that. Um, took me a while to process that because I, <laughs> I wasn't real happy with the fact that they were dragging it out. I was going, hey, coach better, you know, get them, get them prepared for the game. But uh, when I, I was really happy at the end of the game, you know, Plano West and their coaching staff, they, they basically waved the white flag. And they were doing running plays. It's not like plays. we're going to try right. and do a last-minute strike by throwing a pass. Yeah. Just run Real it. Prosper. Get the game over. Let's get on with it. So many of those games, though, they do that. They keep their ones in the whole game just so it, the score anyway, – They can whatever. kind of make it respectable. Well, and there's yeah. something different about knowing that this is yeah. the end of your season. That's true. I mean, this is it. It's over. I, we haven't – as, as, as a team, they haven't experienced that. I mean, 14 years, district championship. Yeah. The sad thing is those people that pick who's first, second, third, fourth, and like that, look at that instead of looking at, you know, the team trying to get everybody in and get some playing time. You know, now, you know, yeah. Allen's done that, and the games are tighter. And so all of a sudden we're, we're ninth, you know, in the, the nation or ninth. Well, in that's, why, that's why rankings don't matter. So I, Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, I mean, that's you just got to realize that and not take it so personally. Yeah. That's right. Well, I have to admit. Admit it. I admit it. We've, we've heard a lot of shocking things this year. Yes, we at have. Games. You yes, know, we, we went have. to the, the the crown jewel of Texas high school football <sighs> oh, stadiums with Kenny three weeks ago. And, what a great experience. You know, but last night I rolled. I mean, I almost had tears. Yeah. <laughs> PA announcer starts the game with. Oh, introducing, one of the or introducing the Plano hottest West. team the hottest in Texas, Texas high school, school football, football, the Plano West Wolves. And I was just rolling. Wow. I tweeted that to all the, the you know, the media guys. Let's, let's say that again. Plano West is the hottest, hottest team. football team in Be, Texas high school football. Because they did. Football. They broke a 34 game, 37, 30, whatever it was. Yeah, losing streak. Losing streak last week by beating Plano mm-hmm. East. And because of that, when I tweeted that, Professor Diggs. He responds reaction. back and goes, I hate all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, rolling. I was like, dude, don't hate me. You hate the announcer. You know, I didn't say it. <laughs> we love you. Come on. <laughs> so, so Diggs took that very personal obviously, but it was As he should. Fun. That just cracked me up. I'm like, oh, my gosh, here we go. Well, Alan loses the coin toss, and surprisingly, Plano West wants the ball. They did not yeah. defer, which yeah. 99.9% of people do. They get the ball, and they're kind of effective. Yeah, they're moving you know, it. Little toss here, little run there. They got a big, strong running back. Yeah, Yates kid was Tabron Yates was was a handful. Yeah, and yeah, but you know they ran that play a lot of times, and you'd think after a certain amount of times that they ran that play, then somebody on the defense would wake up and and start shadowing that guy <laughs> because there wasn't a time that he kept the ball and ran. He pitched it every time. You know, oh, so, the quarterback exactly. Yeah. Well, so, and 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 then they were running that delayed QB draw, and and it, it, both times, at least both times, I recognized it. Poor it was like parting of the Red Sea. You know? Both those quarterbacks got got capped. Golly, yeah. they were slow getting up. Yeah, but they made some yardage on that play, and, and mm-hmm. that's the point. That was the point. So they. They get the ball and they keep it, and, and they were doing that. They were running the play clock down to five seconds before they snapped the ball, which, you know, it's you're trying to shorten the game, shorten Allen's possessions. Right, get home before the 10 o'clock news, they, you, know, you know, all that stuff. Exactly. Goals. And so they, they actually got down to the Allen 41 before the drive stalled, but they took five minutes, about five minutes and 53 seconds off the clock. Allen didn't touch the ball until six minutes left in the first quarter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, dang, man, let's hope this doesn't happen all night. Glad they stopped him. No points scored. Yeah. Allen gets the ball at their own nine. Um, first play, sweep, favorite play for Jordan Johnson. He goes mm-hmm. 49 yards. And they're yeah. like, all right, you're out of the hole. We're rolling. Thunder and lightning start taking off. Jalen Jenkins runs for 13. Blaine Green catches his first pass of the night. He ended up catching eight or nine. Um, yeah. I think he caught nine on the night for 16. And all of a sudden, you're down to the Plano West 13-yard line. Yeah. And then the three Stooges <laughs> showed up. Oh, my gosh. And, or the and Keystone I don't know, Cops or whatever you're – Something. Raylan must have been – I don't know what Raylan was Wait doing. a minute. Let, let's reenact that. <laughs> there you go. Get that phone. Let me do it. Hold your drinks. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, 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 oh my gosh! Oh, 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 oh. We had a fumble. That's exactly what happened in the game. <laughs> Pause. We are stopping the podcast for just as. Well, it wasn't that fun, guys. Uh, we just want to take a second here in the middle of the podcast and show you the play that we were trying to recreate that caused the mayhem on our side that uh, just made everybody giggle and laugh. We had to clean up a mess. But uh, here's the play from last night's first quarter that resulted in a fumble by Allen that, that we, again, were trying to recreate when the ball went crazy and David's drink went flying. So just one second and it'll be right behind this. Oh, oh, get it, get it, get oh. it. Oh. And that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Right in Rayleigh's yep. face, man. Exactly. It was a debacle just like you saw here. It was crazy. It was wild. It, it was a bad outcome, for it, sure. The ball hits him in the face mask and down goes... Down the, goes Rayleigh. Plano West recovers. You know, and Allen only spent like 40 seconds with the ball. And they right. were driven that far and then they fumble, so... We are going to take a time out here, folks, because those of you who who know who know what's going on today is huge in Tuscaloosa. That's a big head. Yeah. And Alabama LSU are playing in Tuscaloosa, and we have a sideline reporter, individual on the ground in Tuscaloosa that we are going to call Mr. Mm -hmm. Chris Cumnock. Knowledge about all things football. Is going to talk to us. Yeah. About Hello? Chris. Chris. How are you, Hi, sir? Boys. Hey, man. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're yep. wet. <laughs> We've been Here we are. <laughs> yeah. David's wet. We, we just had a... Uh, we were illustrating the, the snap to Raylan last night that hit him in the face mask with a football. And it, it bounced off the table and knocked over David's drink. And <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah, so I, wet my, I wet my pants. There. We, we're having a, a wonderful podcast so far. <laughs> <laughs> we, we scrambled to recover, but the recovery was made. This we is, made the call. This is going to be podcast gold. Yeah. So, okay. you, how are you? Right. You doing good? I'm good, man. All right. We, uh, we were up. Uh, we met our son for the – he got us in the player's lot at, at, at the – Tide practice facility because the the university. I mean, it is it is shut down. Yeah, my daughter told me that. Yeah, yeah, because Trump's coming too. Trump's coming. Yeah. College game uh, day. Oh, it's, wow. it's, it's, yeah. yeah, what a spectacle. SEC networks here. We were just at game day a few minutes ago. Oh, and, were you? Um, but you know, it's it's surreal to just walk around and everything is is TSA and Secret Service. Oh boy. I mean, they've taken over the entire campus, so they've kind of shut down, a, you know, a bubble around Bryant Denny. And I mean, you know, you come here for normal games and you just see police and, and the, the third-party security people. But today, they've all been replaced. I mean, there's, there's, you know, every ten feet you walk, there's a Secret Service person around here. Well, yeah. and so the student section's not going to be happy because all the contraband is going to be confiscated. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and and you know, there's. The whole configuration outside the stadium to get in is much different. They brought in, you know, all these metal high-tech detectors. metal detectors. And, oh my. and so if the game kicks off at 2.30, we were told you need to be in the stadium <laughs> by no later than 11.45. Yeah, aren't oh, they opening wow. the gates like at 11? Yeah, yeah, they're opening them today early. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's anyway. Good. That's why. Well, is there, what's the environment? I mean, it's huge. It's, it's obviously uh, the game it, of the year. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, we've I got mean, it's just people we, everywhere. Yeah, we've got there game, he is right there. No, oh. we've got game day on in the background here, so we're kind of watching. Um, yeah, that scene, but um, so yeah, you, it's you, it's crazy, you know. You, so there's SEC Network, they're set up and they're broadcasting live, mm -hmm. and then you walk a little further, and then there's there's game day, and so we were over there for the for the start of game day, and, and uh, you know, it's just a ton of people. It's it's not like any game I've ever been to here. I mean, you know, kickoff's not until 2.30, but, but this campus has just been rocking since 7 o'clock this morning. Yeah. When did you get there? Did you fly, What day did you fly in? Uh, we we actually drove in oh. yesterday. Oh, did you? Very cool. Cool. Yeah, we, we, we made the road trip yesterday, and and uh, so, 
you know, we, we were fortunate to get in a restaurant and have dinner last night because, you know, Tuscaloosa is not built for 100,000 people to, mm-hmm. to be here for a couple yeah. days. When you got to drive to Birmingham to eat dinner, you know, it's <laughs> something's going on in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. exactly. Well, what are your thoughts on the game? Well, wait, well, let me ask you a question because I don't, I haven't seen, is Tua playing or not? He is. He, oh. He's going to play. He's, he's good. Okay. He's good to go. Oh. All right. That changes my thought a little bit. What's your thought? Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I think if if Alabama can, you know, they're starting they're starting five true freshmen and will play six true freshmen consistently on defense. Oh. I mean, kids that were playing high school football last year. So, mm. you know, from game one this year to now, I mean, you've seen it every week get a little bit better. I mean, game one, there were a lot of busts and, and you know, just mental errors. And then, you know, it's kind of come down a little bit each week. And, and, you know, this week playing this LSU offense, it's going to be really important. That, you know, you can get away with that playing Ole Miss. Oh, Jalen oh. Jones is going to hurt you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do it today and it's going to be a touchdown. So, yeah. um, I think if, if Alabama's defense is playing well, then, you know, I, I, I think we roll. But... Um, and, you know, it's more critical for Alabama today because I do think – I think if LSU loses a game here by 10 today, you know, because they've they, they played Florida and, and, you know, they've played Auburn, they could still get in the playoffs. If Alabama loses today, it, it's They're probably done. not happening this year. Yeah, which which would be a shock of all shocks. But if, if any team would get in with one loss and not be a conference champion, it would be Alabama. So – there's still a lot of football yeah. to be played. So. I just don't want that stress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor you know, little tight fan. Yeah. I've already uh, expressed my um, welcome to many LSU fans today. I don't want them to feel like they're home here. Aren't they fun? Um, You're number so, one. You're number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just yelled at a guy who was just yelling, Saban sucks, and I'm like, Bet you wish you still had him as your head coach, though. You got Coach O. <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, so have you been keeping up with any of the high school football that's been going on? Absolutely. Not to put you on the spot. So what? So what? Do you, general observations. What do you think uh, about the scene so far this year? You know, I think I think it's really top heavy in, in the Metroplex as far as teams that, that have a shot. I mean, obviously. Yeah, I hate to say this about about Duncanville, but if they don't win it this year, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen for them. I mean, yeah. They're they're just loaded. Yeah, set up as there for sure. I mean, it's been their whole mission all year. But you know, Allen's Allen, and and I said this when I came on with you guys before. I I, I don't think this is the typical Allen loaded team, but they're still. Those kids are, are so detail oriented, and the coaching staff's great, and and they're Allen, so they're always going to have a shot. Yeah. So, you know, South Lake's gotten themselves back up where they've got a shot. I think Denton Geyer's got a shot. I think Cedar Hill's got a shot. Um, and you know, it's I think you know out of that group, they're all I think Duncanville's on. obviously the strongest. Sure. But but you know, I mean. Well, how does great crazy stuff happen? Well, it does. All you got to do is look at the title game last year. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah. things do happen. You know, whether it's the last yeah. play of the game or the middle of the game or the, you yeah. know, whatever. And Desoto's obviously down this year, but how how do you think? Uh, I mean, Longview is is just a juggernaut too. But how do you think they fit into the the whole mix when you kind of add them into the DFW scene? Uh, you got Longview. Yeah. You yeah, know, with I, King I think, at quarterback. Yeah, I think the court. You know, quarterback's really good. Um, I talked to a buddy of mine that lives down there the other day, and I was, I was saying, you, know, you got a shot at winning this thing again. He said, you know, and he goes to all the games. He, yeah. he said we're not as good as we were last year um, on either line of scrimmage. He said, you, you know, we've we've gotten through all our games this year, and and, and obviously we've got skilled guys that can that can go. But but he said we we were better on the line of scrimmage last year, particularly on our offensive line. He said it. He's concerned if they play a team that's got a strong defensive line that they could be in some trouble. Um, and, you know, for, for me, looking at Allen, I mean, you know, 
they're always Allen's always going to be able to score. But the thing I've been really impressed with this year is that defensive line is legit. Yes. Yeah. And, and and Lane Lewis is back now. He was out a couple of weeks. Oh. The last two weeks, he's just been a man on a he's, mission. Yeah, he's, he's on fire. And Cyrus on it last McDougal night. and then uh, you know Elijah Fisher. Fisher. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Well, and they can roll them in with the depth they have up there too, and it's just relentless. Yeah. You know, over and over again. Last night, you know, Tyson Carlton had a great game. Yeah, he did. You know, and, and number ninety nine. It's 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 fun to watch all that happen. You know, with that many different kids, so. Yeah, and I, I have a question for you guys because uh -oh. I mean, yeah, you watch this this district year after year. I don't know if you guys are as stunned as I am, but Plano. I don't know how the Plano schools <laughs> can be as call that one bad as. Oh my gosh! I mean, you've got thousands of kids in those schools, and you can't find thirty of them that can play. And I I don't think it's the kids. Amen. It's coaching. Well, yeah. The coaching and the setup, it seemed to me the way the Plano East ended up dealing with, was it a, a Mesquite Horn coach that came over for a year? Right. Um, couldn't couldn't yeah. get out or was fast it Poteet? enough. Yeah. It was I, well, Jackson. What was his name? Uh, Jackson Jackson. He went to Great Jackson. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and so I think what happens is Randy that Jackson, the, yeah. the principals at the high school has a little bit more say than you might think, you know, with Gerald Brents as AD over all three programs but it seems like the high school and the principal over there has a little bit more influence and say i'm not sure you know if we can get some insider input on all of that but they certainly have a, a an issue whether it's the program setup or whether it is you know stale uh, you know coaching whatever i mean I, well, i'm sure they're doing their best but it's just it's not happening at, at this point it has to be on the parents of the athletes I mean, how long does it have to go on before they put their foot down and say, something's got to happen, something's got to go? I, I agree. Yeah. Well. There needs I, to be I an just, enema I, <laughs> of playing no football. I, 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 think you, I think you start with Gerald Brents, and, and I have nothing against Gerald Brents, but, no. but you can only do things the same way for so long, and then, you know, the, the game changes and the landscape changes, but you don't change. Yeah. And it's so incestuous how they hire coaches there. You know, you got to have yeah. some kind of, you know, most of the time you want a, a Plano tie-in. And, and I, I just think the whole thing needs to be flushed. And because, you know, you look at when you go to games, and they don't believe. I mean, the, their fans don't believe. They come to games knowing that hey, we're going to get blown out tonight. Well, and that's we, we talked a little bit earlier on our, the first part of our podcast about the scores last night. And, and Especially when we look at Plano, which was a team that was all set to – I mean, they were 3-1 and one in district. And, you know, they, they get shut out last week Fell by McKinney Boyd. Right. And then they got blown out last night by Prosper. 58-27. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was – It wasn't hurt. even competitive. And you're like, what's going on? You know, you're, you're in a position to make the playoffs and you, you, you tank your last two games, basically. And right. Especially, Prosper obviously to me is a more talented team than Plano, but last week against McKinney Boyd to get shut out at home by McKinney Boyd, and again, nothing against McBride, but it's his first year there, and, and Allen had just played them the week before. We we knew what that team was. How right. Plano just can't compete, I don't get it either. And, and we've been saying it for years because I'm, we'll be honest with you, we like the Plano schools being competitive. Absolutely. Because this district – Without them being competitive, is it's just boring. like last night. It's boring. That game meant nothing, and we kind of went to the game, and you go to it because we go to all of them, but it's just like, ho-hum, here we go again. So we're all for flushing everything at Plano. Now, I will say this, and this is just my opinion. We haven't gotten to this part yet. I thought Plano West last night, my opinion, yes, had some pretty good athletes, and I could see a little difference in their toughness. They had some nasty players, mm -hmm. which I like. Yeah. You know, good nasty. Right. Yeah, yeah, good nasty. They and and you know, Smith is the They're new coach seniors. over there. Yeah. He's not. He's not a Plano guy. He's not a. He's yeah. not a McCullough. And he he may. And, and granted, it's going to take a while for that program to get back where it was. But it was nice to see, kind of a. To me, it was a change yeah. in the attitude of the the kids on the field. And they do. Right. They do have some athletes over there. The quarterback. Oh sure. You know he was well, really, he was really good. He was doing well. Yeah. Threw the ball well. I, I think if if you took the Allen coaching staff and gave them a year to work with the Plano kids, mm -hmm. 
I, I don't know if they'd be ten and zero, but I, but I think they'd be seven and three. Yeah. Well, and, it, you know, and, and 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 I think you could say it about Plano East or Plano West. I think they've all got got. I mean, they got too many kids in, in the in the school not to be able to find some kids that can play. But I mean, to go through this every year, and and I mean that. You know they know what good football looks like over there. You got to yeah. think back a ways, but but they they know what good football looks <laughs> like it once every year. And I agree with you. I, I don't know why somebody's not standing on the table yelling, "Okay, we got to change something here." Yeah, yeah. That's well, and, the and shocker of the whole thing. The thing that we've all noticed through the year and playing all three Plano schools is is it's programmatic because if you can't field more than fifty players, it seemed like Plano West had about forty nine last week. And Plano may have actually had less than 50. It, That's it's, it's more of a symptom. It's more of a symptom of some combination of, of things going yeah. on. Why, why aren't they playing? Yeah, they don't want to be associated with yeah. the, the, the bad That's it. You situation. just hit the nail on the head. I think kids just, they're like, you know what? I'll skip it. I don't. Yeah. Because it's, you know, you walk down the halls at Allen, or even, look, even at Prosper, yeah. or, or Longview, or, or mm-hmm. Alito, or Highland Park. It, it's a pride thing to have a, a jersey on and, and for people to know whether you play or you don't, you're the third string punter, or whatever. It, it's a pride thing. And I don't, I mean, you don't get that at any of those playing at school. People walk by in the hall and like, oh, you play football, great, get two and seven every year or two and eight yeah. every year. And, yeah, you're going mean, to go to, you're going to the baseball game? Yeah. Yeah, big deal on the cap, yeah. on the cap yeah, in the exactly. chess club. So, I don't know. I mean, I didn't mean to turn this into a Plano discussion, but it's just, yeah. I scratch my head every year. It's like, God, how can this be so bad yeah. well, every year? It's yeah. the elephant in the room for sure. Well, and there's, you know, yeah. there's a lot of talk on the chat boards about it and everybody wonders. And, you know, we, we always use it because, you know, Allen gets criticized for its size and, you know, that's why you win. And we always point to the Plano schools and say, no, that's this not. This is big. There's a yeah. lot more to it than just pure numbers. Do numbers play oh, yeah. a difference? Yes, they make a difference. But they don't make the entire difference. Yeah. Because it's, it's obvious that, well, I mean, you, you can go and even look at a Duncanville. I mean, Duncanville's a huge school. Yeah. You know, and until they got samples down there, yeah. they, they weren't right. what they are now. Right. They didn't know how to win. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 he got down there and, and, and he knows how to recruit, manipulate the system. <laughs> manipulate the system. I like it. Yeah, ever. we didn't hear that C word, but yeah. Well, and so when he was at Skyline, and Skyline's a huge school, also. Well, Skyline was on top every year, yeah. and then oh yeah, he becomes the draw. Yeah, it's very know? competitive. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's there's a lot more to it. So we 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 do think it's a systematic problem within the leadership of the athletic department. You know, top down. Because if you look at all their other sports, you know, girls basketball, you volleyball, know, baseball, baseball, softball, tennis, baseball, they're all very competitive. Yeah. Golf, yeah, right. tennis, and. Uh, there years. isn't a, a total twenty and, years, and that's what we used to say about Allen too. You know, it's it's more than size because Allen's sports up until recently weren't also that competitive either. That's yeah. right. You know, it's been the last five, six, it. seven years yeah. for every other sport to catch up. Outside of wrestling, yeah, yeah. outside of wrestling, <laughs> obviously. Well, and, you know, I I think today, I mean, and I think this extends to colleges too, but you're you're dealing with. A, you know, Saban did an interview the other day, and he was talking about, they were asking him, what, what's changed with athletes? And he said, well, it used to be, you know, you just said, do this, and and kid did it. Yeah. And he said, now now you have to say, I want you to do this, and here's why. And 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 so you're dealing with a little bit different kids now, and I, and I think you got to have coaches that, that kids want to go follow now. I mean, a Pied Piper kind of coach particularly in the non-football sports. Hmm. Um, but I, I think coaching is so important today that, that kids have a belief in who they're following versus, well, I'm following him because he's our coach. I don't think kids think that way anymore. And, you know, so I think when you make a coaching hire, you, you kind of have to take into to account, who, you know, who are we hiring and, and what kind of personality do they have? And, and can they can they convince kids that, we can do this and you know I, I just i think plano hasn't had that i think a lot you know a lot of schools you know don't have that they haven't figured that that part out um you know i, I know you know DeSoto, you know brought back claude mathis um and, and i know when i talked to you guys earlier and i mean I'm not, i'll never 
I'll never shy away from my disdain for Claude Mathis. I think I think he's I think he's a bad guy, and Good I can sit and talk to people for hours about why. But you know that, that game the other night. I mean, you know, Desoto brought him back because they're like, you know, Cla- Claude's you know Claude's a Desoto guy. He knows how to win here. Although the other guy won a state championship. But anyway, they brought him back. So they they play a great game against Cedar Hill the other night. So it's an epic high school football game. Mm-hmm. One point. And, and Claude Mathis says, I'm, I'm not shaking hands after the game, and I'm not making my kids shake hands after yep. the game. Yep, saw that. That's it in a nutshell right there. Like, wow, you want that guy? You want that guy molding your kids? Yep. Good grief. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Good I, grief, Charlie I Brown. I showed that to my wife, <laughs> and she's just like, what's wrong? I'm like, that's that's his way. Mentality. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. It's everything wrong with sports. Yep. Mm. What an embarrassment. Share well, this podcast with them. Yeah. I will I'm send it down to him. <laughs> yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes over. But, well, my friend, we appreciate you hopping on with us. We know you got things. So when are you, you fixing to go in or get over there? Well, my wife is standing, and Brett, Brett went on into the stadium. He had to go and, and get through sec- security with, with the Secret Service peeps. Yep. yep, yep. So he, he had to go in early, so he left us, and my wife's standing in a line. She's probably maybe 100 at starbucks oh goodness oh my <laughs> so um yeah it's it's crazy but it's it's fun yep. you know it's gonna be great uh go tigers if if it goes the wrong way today my i think my wife wants me to uber back to <laughs> oh <laughs> wow i won't get, be a fun guy to ride with let's get, just say that i but, can imagine hey tell donald we said hi yeah <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And hey, hey uh, so Alan plays who next week? Saxy. Saxy. Okay. You All coming? Right, well, I'll be there. You coming? All right, cool. We got, we got oh, a seat yeah. for you if you yeah. want to. If you yeah, want to come with us, you come sit with us, man. Or are you going to go yeah, upstairs? I'll do that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. All right. Got to get this thing rolling. We love start it, tailgating it. at two o'clock, so we'll be there. <laughs> All right. All right, buddy. Thanks you guys for have a good good rest of the day. All right. Take care. care. Thank you, Chris. You bet. All right. Bye bye. And there you have it, folks, live from Tuscaloosa, Mr. Chris Cumnock with lots of opinions about lots of different things. Hey. That's Smells good stuff. nice to hear, yeah. We yeah. need to call him every week. He keeps up on stuff. <laughs> He's Heart, the draw. We'll get Texas an extra 10 mop viewers this week. <laughs> All right. Now what are we talking about? Well, it, yeah, I mean, we got to talk about playoffs. We just mentioned it. Alan's going to be playing Saxy at home because of the district championship, so... District champions get home uh, uh, seating for the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, we haven't even gone through the game yet. No. Know? We kind of just died in the middle of that. Well, it, well, it kind of died in the middle of that. Okay, well, night, yeah, well, go, back, go back to the game. Bright spots. We were a little oh. bit down at running back. Jeez. Filled in nicely. There were some real stars out there. Sam Hunter. Sam Hunter. Wow. I, what else can you say? You know, wow. we had the catch of the, the year last year, or last, last week. week. With Tejon. And I we think, had the run. I think we had the run of the year this week. Yeah. yeah. With right. Sam. Balance, breaking tackles. Strength. Oh, speed. Hey, have we forgot about the pass across the middle last night? How many times did we have the slants across the middle for there's big some, yardage? There's something yep. to be said for yes. that. Yes. Yep. And I tweeted out yesterday about the bubble screen and, and Lord Almighty. Predict- predictions came true on that bubble screen. Yeah. There, there were some bright spots last night. And oh, absolutely. And again, at the end of the day, the defense played well again. The sacks were there all night. Mm-hmm. Fisher had a big name, as we mentioned with Chris. Lane Lewis had a big yeah. a big time. Um, Cyrus. Tyson Cyrus. Carlton. Tyson. Tyson. Cyrus McDougal. Um, you know, I, I look here. The penalties still seem to be... Well, yeah, number 78 way. was having a bad day with the yeah. false starts, and so it switched in 75 for 78 there after, okay. after two consecutive and sessions. Mr. Norman got called off the field after But it is funny how they seem bounds. to happen right after each other in the same drive that just, just kills a drive. Yep. You know, the opportunity where you're going to go ahead and just put that puppy to rest, and then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. dingle, 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 berry. You know, I mean, it's just... It's a new song. Can, <laughs> that, can that, 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 dingle, 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 yeah. dingle, berry. Anyway, it just, it just seems that that's the pattern. Well, how many penalties did we have? Do you have, have you got that pulled you know, out? It was, it was at least 10. It's it 10, was, 10 for 65. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and that gets really old real quick. And, um, oh, there was 
what five or six on that one drive yeah with three at least three personal fouls yep yeah it, it, it's a uh, holding illegal procedure you're at the you're at the point in the season yeah where that it should not happen one should not be happening two yeah it, you got to stop it because are you good enough to overcome that against playoff teams because because yeah. now the real season starts and it's mm -hmm. it's a yeah. different and right out of the box you get an eight and two saxy team that lost two games by three points so you look at that, they lost by one point to right. Wiley and it's they not lost a scrub by two team. To, they've lost by two to Trinity and and that was their season now I I went and looked at at Saxy's schedule this morning they they played a lot of close games they probably had six wins by less than a touchdown. So it shows that they know how to win in those close games. Right. Okay. They are a run-oriented team, which I think plays right into Allen's right, hands. Right. right. Because their quarterback has thrown for less than 1,000 yards. They do have an 1,100-yard rusher. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they've got a pretty good running yeah. back there. But from if you're going to play an 8-2 and two team, you'd rather play an 8-2 and two team that runs the ball, at least in, in my yeah. view. Mm -hmm. Well, and that, from Allen's perspective, the, the matchup I think is a good matchup. Well, you know they'll change our, that game plan. You know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I mean, if they're a running team, they're going to try and run, and when the run starts to get stopped, they're going to start forcing that pass, yeah. and we're going to see some pick sixes. And well, I hope Mr. Kane will dial up that blitz like he did last night, which yeah, was Coach very Kane. effective. Yeah, I'm sure that the game plan. The good thing is it's a home game, which you know always is a yeah. Is, and and don't be looking ahead to potentially a rock wall in round no, two. You, no, you, you really need to go one and zero at this time of the year. Yep. Well, because you know Saxy is really gonna is gonna buckle down and and, and go all in a, on this game. There's gonna be a big crowd. Yep. They're gonna bring a bunch oh, yeah. of people. Still it's out. not that far, yeah. and they do they they play in our stadium. We went to that game. They've yeah, had some playoff games. Game. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember who they were playing. Sorry, Rockwell. Cop no, oh, it, yeah, was, it Rockwell. was Rockwell. It was Rockwell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was the Rockwell. Saxie and it was a game. it was a close tight game. Yeah. I was yeah, hoping was. we'd get Saxy, but yeah, whatever. Saxy won. Well, and and this last this week they ended up beating Rowlett, what forty two to forty. So that's that close game you're talking about. Yeah. And Rowlett's a five and five team. Well, yeah, and we know about five and five Rowlett teams. But, but that was that was for Rowlett was fighting for a playoff spot. That's right. Saxy was in no matter what. Um, so they're and again district game, and they they tried. You know, it was nip and tuck. So, <laughs> Saxy comes into town 7 o'clock Friday night. Yeah. Um, as far as what happened with West, you know, 456 total yards, 161 passing, 295 rushing yards. You know, without your top two rushers, uh, there was an injury to Jalen Jenkins last night. He left the game in a boot. You know, we hope everything is good with him. Yeah. But, you know, Sam stepped up. Um you know, Raylan only ran five times last night. Yep. You think about it, you thought they were pretty runs, though. They were pretty. He's a smooth runner, boy. You can see his track in him when he runs. He's very smooth. <laughs> yeah, and you, you saw that whole play developing last night where they they shifted everybody to the right side, and you just knew. Mm -hmm. and even all of their the defensive players were to that side too. Here they all come. of them. Yep. And it was so such a great fake and go. I yeah. mean, it's, we only attempted 17 passes last night, completed 12. Um, Brayden had one pick. Um, I, you know, our receiving core is a little banged up. Uh, I think uh, Bryson will be back next week for the playoffs. Blaine's just playing out of his mind yeah. right now. Uh, he had nine catches last night, nine mm -hmm. of the 12. Urias Hill on the slant mm -hmm. a couple times, one for a touchdown. Yep. Uh, he played well on the interior. Well, number number twelve, you know, had him back. Uh, Dominic uh, Wilson. Yeah, wow. I, I I love his patience, and he's got some real run ability. He's he's it's, a baller. It's nice to see a punt return. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that for whatever reason, I think the, the instruction a lot of times is fair catch the ball, but the last couple of weeks they've allowed those yeah. guys to turn them loose a little bit. And with so, his with the skill that he's showing, uh, that's. And he's aggressive That's in clutch too. moves. Yeah, yeah. You have to be aggressive. He's got some real quick moves once he gets the ball and and gets downfield. Yep. Um, speaking of rushing, Plano West ran for 127 last night, but on 40 carries, so a little over 3.2 yards per carry. That rushing defense is really strong, and uh, I think that'll come into to play next week as as we jump into to playing Saxy. So yeah. Um, we were asked a question. We're going to move off football for a minute because Saxy's next week. We'll see you Friday night. 
Well, I said yeah. not moving off football. Yeah, we're going to move into a topic that that came up on a podcast last week by Professor Diggs on his Friday night podcast, and, and the question came up was who is Allen's biggest district rival? And it's really two questions. You go, who is their district rival and who is their rival overall? Yeah, and, playoff and, but, rivals. Yeah. But the district rival was – that's that's the question that originally came up, and their answer was there isn't one, that really Allen's rivals are teams they played in the playoff. And so we, we've been thinking this morning is after yeah. we got that question was he, they wanted us to respond to what we think who Allen's district rival is in – we had some with, heated discussions before the podcast started. Without go, becoming very old timers. Right. Because you don't want to do that. Because, what? Huh? Huh? <laughs> exactly. We Dunst. said, okay, post 2006, post 2007. In the last 10, 12 years, yeah. what teams have, have we looked at? We looked at because that's who they ask. It depends but, on what year it is because it seems like every other year it's somebody different, you know? Somebody's strong. I mean, Plano East was strong there for maybe a couple, three years. Right. You know, and there were a couple games that Plano actually played us relatively close, and and well, the closest game in the in the state, new stadium. Yeah. Was, yeah, was thirty-five, Plano thirty-four. Game. Yeah, they went for the win. And thank you, Chance Malasson. Yeah, a little tip in the corner saved us from a an ugly. So I think it's safe. It's Plano. safe to say that Plano is always an Allen rival. I mean. It, it, We'd like them to be better, but there's always a little extra, you know, pep in the step when it's going to be a Plano game. It just, it just is. I mean, that's my thoughts. Now, Plano East historically has been a pretty doggone big rival. They've well, some... I think if uh, if Prosper had is not splitting into two schools and they're one school, I think that's that Allen's build. major rival over the next ten years. But. You know, we know but that's not going to happen yeah. because that's a program that's on way on the up and good, good, good athletes over there. Yeah, and then there are the transient schools. I mean, Wiley is always, you know, when they're in district, it's always a good game, and, and there's some there's some hate going on there on both sides. But it's just not really – you don't think of it as a rivalry. Mm -hmm. So I think they're really close when they say, ah, there's, there's probably not one, but – well, you know, you get the transit schools, the Jesuits, the Planos, the you know the the Hebrons and and the Coppell. you know that that whole school. Um, Coppell, yeah, Coppell's kind Had of some good teams. But like Nolan said, you know, to be competitive is is really what it takes to have a true rivalry. It seems unless you're in. Go ahead. Well, that's right. I'm no, I thought you were... unless you're one of the Plano schools. I mean, Plano is always a rival to, to the other Plano schools. We we just don't kind of don't have that built in. So, I agree. I don't think Allen has a rival in, in the district because for to to me for it to be a rival, both teams have to win. Yep. That's why I would go with Trinity <clears throat> over the years because yeah. we've both won. You yep. know, back and forth. And so yeah, we, I've played them in regular season too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Where where you go into game and you're just like, oh, I, I really hope we're going to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we may not. Yep. You know, and that's that's where. <laughs> I mean, no matter how good Plano thinks they are, no matter how good these, like you look at this year, it's really interesting. Our team, the mm -hmm. Allen team, against the maybe three teams that we've played. Well, there's been hype coming in about how good the other team is. Mm -hmm. In the first half, the game is over. Mm -hmm. And then it's Proper. this horrible second half, run out the clock, garbage where it just falls to pot, you know, goes to pot and yeah. all this. It's, it's a hard watch. But the, it yeah. is. Yeah. But but the Allen team gets up for it, and, and that game is over by halftime. Mm -hmm. uh, now I totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I agree with you because you, you stole my words. I was going to say both teams have to win because otherwise mm -hmm. it's just – It's a one-sided deal. Yeah, I mean, Allen hasn't lost a district game since yeah. 2010. Yeah. I mean, we've gone 10 years now 10, without losing a district game. And so you go, meh, do you have somebody? You know, back in the days when Burkhead was at Plano. Oh, yeah. You know, okay, you knew your hands were full. And you knew you had a really good chance to lose. And and if you go the I'd say the ten years before two thousand and eight, 
Yeah. There probably were a few more rivalries oh, in there yeah, because Allen wasn't absolutely. winning every single district game, and, and it was a struggle to get through that. Now they, you know, they've beaten Plano West consistently. They've beaten Plano East consistently. Right. They've lost to Plano a time or two. But I agree with you. I don't. I don't yeah. think it's. And I'm with you. I hate playing Trinity. That team scares me mm-hmm. more than yeah. any other team we play. Because that smash mouth run. The the O line is run blocking. You know all what's game. coming. Yeah, the and power you, power eye formation. Stop it. You got to stop it. And, and when, you, when you when you can't stop it, you're like, oh man, you know our offense has got to step up and go. Yeah. Because and you've got to you've got to get a break. You've got to get one or two yeah. stops somewhere along the way. Well, and and we've been running a lot do. of jet sweep this year, and Trinity is just they're the kings of yeah. the jet sweep. Well, it's they, dangerous. They run the ball so well. Yeah. You know, they do throw in that pass. We're totally offside. And yeah, off, when the halfback yeah. throws the pass, oh as my the gosh. And it's it's kind of like we talked before we came on air about Southlake yeah. and how. We would love to be a rival with South Lake, but when you get beat four straight years in the playoffs, and it wasn't they're I mean, our kryptonite. It, it just yeah. and then okay, and then you beat them in the regular season. That you was beat a heartbreaker. Yeah. Two years in a row in the regular season, twelve and thirteen, and you kind of go okay. And and you know they've been going D two, so you don't see yeah. them, or the D one, and you don't get close enough yeah. to them. They fall out. Yeah. You don't you don't have that chance to break that playoff. Yeah. Right. Stigma that you mm-hmm. have, but you yeah. beat them twice, and so that kind of and so South Lake for the playoffs is our kryptonite. Yeah, exactly. and then we are Desoto's kryptonite for the playoffs, and so you could look at that as being a rival game, yep. and they can get up for our game, and we can get up for that game, and, and part of it is they're so in your face, yep. and that's the Claude Mathis legacy that we were talking about earlier. Well, and if you think about twelve, thirteen, and fourteen when when yeah. Allen played Desoto. Allen, well, maybe not 12, but 13 and 14, Allen certainly could have lost those games. Oh, yeah. And without Kyler Murray, it certainly would have. They should have. Yeah. It, it could be. You know, a ref's decision on a touchdown was one. Yeah. Uh, an unbelievable catch by Guyton on a tip ball that should have been intercepted, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, was another. Running in, kick that field goal with yeah. three seconds left. Yeah. Just the whole thing, you, you look back at that and you could say, Allen could be one and two against DeSoto, and you could really, but but it's not that but way. But they're not, yeah. You know, again, 12, that team manhandled them, and, yeah. and that game was over pretty quick. But, I, yeah, I look at, at DeSoto as probably, if there's a rival that I look at and say, okay, that's a rival, even though they haven't beat you. Yeah. You know, it's been really close. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. I look at that and go, hmm. So, I, to answer your question, I don't think, I think we're all in agreement. Allen yeah. doesn't have a district rival currently. Yeah. And if they get one, we'd be, we'd be more than happy. It'd be great. Yeah, we would you know? love that shakeup to occur yeah. and to have a new uh, district rival. You so know, Plano East, what, last year or the year before, started chanting, we want Allen, and they came in and we dropped 56, 56 on them or something, and that yeah. ended that. Yeah, you know, and then look at them this year. Yeah. Well, and some of the history with them. Who was the who was the linebacker number eleven in the NFL now for year for years? They went to UT. Yes. Yes. His name is uh, uh, I can see was it Keenan Robinson. Yeah. Keenan yeah. Robinson. Keenan yeah. Robinson. Yeah. Just a badass dude, and and he was oh sorry. Not safe for work. <laughs> well, and and then the Smalls, Miklo and and yeah. uh, Rico Smalls. Rico Smalls yeah. is a quarterback. And that was tough, you know. Back it was it two thousand five or smalls. six, yeah. And they had good talent. Breaks his breaks his collarbone, and we have to end up going in and, and play Round Rock because you know they got beat by Round Rock, and you know. And that's the thing is they just, have all that talent. They do, it, yeah. just like Chris said. You know, that to me is the one team in Plano that should be consistently seven and three, eight and two, nine and one every year. Yeah, yeah. it's Plano East. Yeah, and and for whatever reason they can't do it because I look at them every year we play them and I'm kind of like. Big mean. offensive line, big defensive line. Yeah, lots of athletes, skill, big receivers. Skill yeah. players. What's going on? You know, how can that be such a joke? You know, and, and Diggs has the same question. You know, he's shaking his head this year. Poor guy. He yeah. hates all of us now. <laughs> well, <laughs> but yeah. So there's our well, answer. We love him. Yeah. So if anybody else disagrees, or if you think Allen has a, a district rival, put it in the comments. You know, yeah. and we'll, tell us why. Yeah, let us know what you think. But that's kind of the way we we look at it. So, anyhow. Yeah. Do we have any other scores, any other playoff uh, uh, info we want to talk about? What you, do you know, got? You I, got? I think let's wait and get the brackets out, and then after yeah. next week's game, see, I'm counting on a win. We're going to do a podcast either way, but yeah. we, we can talk about our thoughts. And maybe we'll do a little Facebook Live before the game. Who knows? You know, Who we knows? could do that. We could do that. Do Facebook Live from the tailgate. We'll see if, if Chris comes by. We'll put him on. And oh, he absolutely. Can spill yeah. his wisdom, and he can talk about the game today that he's at. <laughs> you know, Roll Tide. 
My no. daughter's there too, guys. So I got to say, roll the dice. So, you know, you're paying for it. You might as well root for it. <laughs> <laughs> Even I could care less, but that's just how it is. So, anything else, guys? No. Uh -oh. I, I think nope. that's it. All right. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you all year long. This is a, you know. It's been a ride. It's another been a ride. ride. It's all over already. Yeah. Thanks to the kids. Thanks to the coaches, the, the medical staff. Now uh, the real season starts. Exactly. Now so, it becomes uh, really important. Now it becomes business. because We want to go home. We want to go home. And we ain't ready to go home. Nope. We want to, you know. We want road trips. Team, right. Teams to remember My playing December. My son's coming home for Thanksgiving. Aw. And so <laughs> let's give him a game, boys. Let's yeah, give him a game to it. go to. Let's do it. You know, it's it's been a while, so. All right. Dinner, chicken dinner. Have a good afternoon watching college football. In the meantime, go be kind. We'll talk to you later.